welcome everyone. Whoever might be receiving this, it is because uh, we are concerned within Centerville City of the, the water situation, the fire situation. So today we've uh, gathered a panel of people that, apply, that sit over those areas. So we have our two irrigation companies that are here. We have our uh, culinary uh, water with our public works director. We have a, uh, our fire chief here and we have our police chief here. And we're just gonna go around and each uh, of these individuals are gonna give you what is happening in, the, in their department, take two to three minutes, and maybe I will follow up with some questions uh, with them at, at the end. And so we, we will start uh, with Darren Hess and we will let him introduce himself. So Darren. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, yeah, so Darren Hess with Weber Basin Water Conservancy District. Uh, we are, and I'm the Assistant General Manager over operations for the district, um, also the COO. And so, um, you know, we are the large water purveyor in Northern Utah. We serve both culinary uh, drinking water, as well as irrigation water, ag and replacement water throughout the area. Uh, but Centerville City is one of our customers and uh, appreciate uh, the Centerville asking us to be here. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that we typically store 200 to 220,000 acre feet of water and an acre foot of water is a football field, which is an acre one foot deep uh, or 326,000 gallons. So we typically store about 220,000 gallons of, uh, or acre feet of water in a season. This year we stored 7,000 acre feet of water. So uh, virtually nothing or 3% of the normal storage uh, that we typically have. And so that is significant uh, because our reservoirs typically hold uh, a two-year supply when they are full. Uh, we did not receive hardly any storage this year. There just really wasn't any runoff to speak of. And what runoff we did have uh, really soaked into the ground. It did not make it into our streams, our rivers, and fill the reservoirs because the soil moisture was so dry. And so that, that was the, the real issue that we've been dealing with. And, and this year is historic. I mean, we have not seen a year where we've had this little runoff in the 75 years that we've recorded, uh, you know, runoff, water supplies, uh, snow tell. Uh, this is historic and it's, it's the worst one we've seen, especially on the main stem of the Weber River. And so because of that, um, you know, there, there are concerns and issues with water supplies. Uh, Weber Basin, we're currently pumping our drought relief pump station, which pumps water out of Willard Bay. And we pump that water up to Davis and Weber's uh, canal company's system up to their canal. And what we basically do is we exchange water with them. So we pump them water and then we take water further upstream, either in East Canyon uh, or um, Echo Reservoirs. And so uh, we haven't run that pump station in 16 years. Uh, so it's a, it's a big deal and we, when we have to pump uh, that pump station. And then we're pumping all of our groundwater supplies as much as we possibly can uh, to try to preserve as much upstream storage as we can. And with, even with that, uh, it is, it is going to be a very difficult year. And as a result, we have asked for reductions from our um, you know, irrigation companies from our farmers. Uh, we've done a 20% reduction on them and we instituted that in late March. Uh, and then currently we're asking people to water only twice a week right now. Um, uh, we know that, that landscapes will not uh, thrive with that type of watering, especially with the heat that we've had in June. But uh, Utah State University tells us they will survive. And, and they should, you know, once um, temperatures decrease and precip returns, hopefully in the fall, uh, your landscapes and turf should return just fine and uh, definitely should return just fine in the spring. They will go dormant, so they will turn a straw or brown color. That's uh, Kentucky blue. It is fairly resilient and uh, it is just going dormant to preserve itself uh, when temperatures decrease and precip returns. 
but uh, it is a fairly resilient grass. And again, we've worked with Utah State University uh, on these issues, but, but we are asking for the public's help uh, to help us uh, with uh, reduced watering. And uh, we really need to see a lot of uh, straw colored or, or brown lawns out there this year, uh, just because we just, we just don't have the water uh, like we would like to because of the historic drought that we currently see ourselves in, so. Thank you, Darren. Is there, right now you're scheduled to shut off on October 1st. Is there a chance that that could be sooner than that? Yeah, great question. Um, yes, uh, depending on, you know, we have uh, very little control on how much water people actually use on their landscapes. Uh, we do have a lot of meters installed, about 12,000. Uh, so we know about what half of our retail customers are, are using. But uh, again, there's about 100,000 retail customers in the whole area, you know, 22,000, 23,000 are Weaver Basins. But, but yes, if, if we see the reservoirs continuing to drop at, at a significant level, uh, we will have to look at maybe moving that date possibly up from October 1st, maybe September 15th. And, and we don't do that lightly. You know, we only do that if we feel like we have to, but, but uh, that is a real, uh, issue and concern, and we might have to do that. Thank you. I know throughout our town you installed meters through the winter time. Are these meters installed to potentially monitor use and shut off individual systems, or what's a, what's our purpose there for the meters? Yeah, the purpose on the meters is is really to ascertain how much water you know people are using on their landscapes in a drought condition like we currently find ourselves in. It is also a situation so we can monitor, you know, how much water people are using. And if they do go over their allocation, uh, it is something that we can actually look at and say, hey, you've gone over your contracted amount of water. We really are going to have to shut you off because, you know, you've gone over that contracted amount. And so that is something we are looking at and we'll probably do this year and we'll be forced to just because of the situation we find ourselves in. Thank you, Darren. Let's go to our other irrigation water specialist in the center and south part of town uh, from uh, Dual Creek. Do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Mayor. Robert Burns from Centerville Dual Creek Irrigation Company. Uh, I'm the president. So with our cut from uh, Weaver Basin of 20%, we're asking our shareholders to conserve wherever they can and try to reduce their usage by 20%. Um, obviously, our stream flow is quite low. I think right now about uh, an eighth of our water that we're using in our system is coming from local streams and the rest is coming from Weaver Basin. So that will increase as we get into the hotter months and come September, uh, it will, the, the shutdown will all depend on how long Weaver Basin can deliver water to us. We won't be able to sustain our reservoir once Weaver Basin stops delivering water. So people will have to watch their water usage during July and August, especially that's the highest demand. And the, uh, the length of the season this year will completely depend on how they conserve water. So our personnel are, are out talking to people every day about violating the rules about watering between 10 and six. Now, some people can water, start watering at four because their elevation is so high, they have a very low water pressure. But generally everyone should not be using water between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. That's always been our rule for 30 plus years. And you cannot water the same uh, say you can't water the same area two days consecutively so we're, we're talking to people all the time about that we're getting complaints from the state through water resources we're also getting complaints from our shareholders and from anonymous people and we're following up on all of those that we can so we will be writing people warnings our, and our basically our rules are you get a warning and then the second violation, you'll be shut off until you agree to follow the rules. So um, I've never had to shut anybody off for 
for breaking the rules in that manner. So everyone try, I think everybody, all the shareholders try to cooperate. And uh, we are a little bit ahead in water consumption this year just because of the heat. So we need uh, some cooperation with conservation. Thank you. And Robert, are you still are you still looking at two days a week as well that you're encouraging um, people? We're we're really urging people not to not to water more than three times a week, but to really the, the key for us is to try to reduce your water consumption by 20%. And that will kind of fall in with our available water supply. Thank you. Those are our two irrigation uh, companies within Centerville. Uh, now let's go to our fresher culinary water uh, uh, from our public works department and we'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, I'm Michael Carlson, uh, Centerville City's Public Works Director. Thanks, Mayor, for allowing me to chime in on some of my concerns. Uh, my concern starts back, and I'm sure with most everybody else, back into the winter. You know, as the winter months came, we wasn't seeing the snow that we all wanted to see. And so I've been concerned for quite some time. It's not just something that all of a sudden popped up. And I think for most of my colleagues, I, I would agree probably that they would agree with me on that as well. I've been kind of monitoring our aquifers. That's an underground storage that I've been keeping an eye on. It's kind of scary because we haven't really recharged much. Uh, we take that snowpack, it seeps down through the ground and then recharges our aquifer. So we're not in a great shape anyway, we're okay, but our main uh, purpose is to provide culinary drinking water. So having said that, if you know Weaver Basin and Dual Creek shut off October 1st, we're hoping that we don't see a demand on our water system. There's a couple things I'd like to talk about is, you know, when we switch over, you know, people make, I'm gonna get into some illegal connections, but when they tie on and they start using the city water, that demands our reservoirs down. Uh, we're going through quite a little bit of water right now, but it's hot, we get it, we understand that. But uh, we're concerned about the demand on our wells as well. I talked about cross connections. The Centerville City has an ordinance of cross connections. You cannot tie potable, potable water to non-potable water. So you can't take city water and tie it to your irrigation system. If you decide that you want to water your lawn, then you get a hose water, basically. There's no tying it on to where you can use your controllers and everything else. Uh, every year we run into that. We stop the people. We talk to them about that. Some of the downfalls of that is if you are tied to the, to the irrigation water through the city water and we have a back siphonage, you would be the first one to get to drink the irrigation water out of your pipe. So there's health concerns with that. So we please do not ever hook your culinary water to your irrigation water. Uh, we also have uh, the 10 to six rule that is written in city ordinance and we enforce that. We've been doing that on the west side. We've done real well uh, with the exception of one or two companies that uh, we pretty well got them straightened around, but we do enforce that. We do try to help uh, support our other irrigation companies. We try to educate people whenever we get that opportunity as well. Uh, I'm really hoping that we don't get to use uh, city water for irrigation, but remember there is a water rate structure. So the more water that you use, you do get to pay for it. So uh, I think, you know, and in summary to me, I'm nervous about the outcome. I think that it's gonna take a couple good years of snowpack to recharge everything, you know, Weaver Basin and stuff, as well as our aquifers. So I do appreciate the time because this is something that I've been kind of nervous about since uh, you know middle of the winter when things we wasn't getting the snow that I'd like to see up in the mountains and that. So uh, bottom line, you know, for Centerville's aquifers to recharge, it's gotta be on the, the, the slope pacing the city. So uh, and then it percolates down and recharges. So thanks Mayor for allowing me to, to uh, bring up forth my concerns. Sure, now my understanding, Mike, we have six uh, uh, freshwater dams in our city, correct? We have six reservoirs, yes, uh-huh. Okay, and uh, of course, this is a dual-edged sword for me because to me, water is so critical. Uh, it, you, without water, you don't survive. Obviously, as people consume water, it's revenues to the city, but I wanna make sure that we, uh, as you heard from Mike, that uh, we have that, the, that water source available. 
So uh, thanks, Mike, for appreciating those comments. Let's go now to uh, our, our chief of our fire department. We'll let him introduce himself uh, and uh, he, uh, we could talk about a little water and fire mixture here and mainly about the, the, the fire concerns. Well, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Dane Stone, I'm the fire chief with South Davis Metro Fire. Uh, obviously, Centerville is one of the cities that we serve, as well as Bountiful, Woods Cross, West Bountiful, and North Salt Lake. Uh, and so Centerville having a uh, urban interface uh, up on the east side is always a, a concern for us. Uh, and this time of year is around the 4th of July is always a concern. Um, obviously this year is a little bit more because of the drought situation and, and uh, even more so with the, the water uh, that we don't have, the lack of water that we don't have. So uh, as you know, I mean, we, we fight fire with water and uh, we have to use those, those hydrants uh, to supply our trucks with water. So when we have fires, that's what we use. And so that just takes away from all the, the, the other sources that we, you know, the, the other people need it for. So it's, uh, we like to see that the, the reservoirs are full. So if we need to use it, we can use it. Um, but, and, and luckily, you know, all the cities do a good job and, and uh, in, keeping that resource and available and the hydrants uh, functioning. So we appreciate that very much. But this year, uh, you know, you and I have had conversations. I've had conversations with uh, Chief Child and, and uh, um, with, uh, you know, City Manager Brandt Hansen and, and uh, we, we've put a restriction into Centerville uh, and that map is, is on our website, uh, uh, which has been historically the same uh, line that we have uh, followed in the past. Um, and I, I believe that, you know, I'm hoping that people respect that line uh, and uh, use fire, don't use fireworks in that, in that area. Uh, my, my suggestion is that, uh, you know, you follow the, or you come and you visit the Centerville uh, fire sh fireworks show uh, and then uh, you know, maybe not do your own personal fireworks. Uh, we're, we're trying to put that out amongst our, uh, our social media platforms that to you know suggest to people that they don't use their own personal fireworks that they go to their different shows we have three different cities that use fireworks shows um, on the third uh, you know as Centerville being one of those and uh, then uh, Bountiful City on the 23rd so plenty of opportunities to to see some great fireworks shows uh, if you if you have to use fireworks um, you, you know you must uh, then we just suggest that you you know, you'd be smart about it, not around dry grass. Obviously, uh, as, as Darren says, we're, we're gonna, you know, as your irrigation goes down, your water irrigation, you're gonna see your lawn start to brown. And uh, come, come, you know, especially the 24th, uh, you, you'll, you'll probably see some of those lawns, you know, uh, even brown than, more brown than they are now. And so you could start even your grass on fire uh, just with even a, a sparkler. So, um, you know, if you have to use sparkler or excuse me, fireworks, then I would suggest that you, you know, obviously you keep water, a, a water source around or a hose, or, and then even a fire extinguisher if it does start a fire, small fire, uh, and then, you know, obviously adult supervision. Uh, and then that time frame of fireworks is from July 2nd to July 5th, and then July 22nd to July 25th, and then no fireworks in between at all. So Hopefully uh, people are smart and they utilize the fireworks. You know, we want them to have a good, safe uh, holiday, obviously. And, and we're, we're, it's, it's always a good time and, and a lot of family get together. So, but we want everybody to be safe. And, you know, we, uh, I, I'm not sure if people realize, but the, the same firefighters that are responding to grass fires or, or small fires that may be started by people that aren't uh, paying attention to those, those rules or are not smart with their fireworks. Are the same firefighters that are, you know, if they're they're fighting fires on a small grass fire or a grass fire, we don't have the staff to uh, have the ambulances. So when a medical emergency comes in, those firefighters are fighting a grass fire. Uh, that that ambulance is is not in service. So obviously we have to we do a role, and so uh, we don't want to, you know, it's it's tough to staff everything and with all the shows and and uh, going on, we have to make sure that we have the staffing to do it, but. Uh, you know, for people that don't um, follow the rules and, and start a fire, then it, it does take away from, uh, could, it could possibly take away from those medical emergencies as well. So 
other other fire stations have to respond to those and maybe a little longer uh, delayed response. So, thank you, Chief. Uh, and I would uh, encourage our residents, just as Chief said, attend our fireworks show. Um, I'm not going to do fireworks this year. I would hope that we would cut way back. There's a lot of political stuff out there about banning. Uh, we cannot ban. Uh, so I know Salt Lake did two days ago. They're under some scrutiny legal wise now. We have, have followed the guidelines, uh, as Chief said, by outlining a restricted area. And our city council voted and approved that restricted area. Uh, we'll go now to our police chief uh, in regards to what he might be seeing out there. We'll let him introduce himself uh, and the concerns that he has uh, along these lines with water and fire as well too, chief. Everyone muted myself. Thank you, Mayor Paul Child, Chief of Police. I'm also the Emergency Management Director for the City of Centerville. So I'm kind of wearing two hats and, and have concerns in both of those areas. In 2019, we got a we got kind of a taste of what it could be when we have a wildland fire that gets into our urban interface, where three homes were basically destroyed and bountiful. That fire was caused by a uh, an attended campfire, and this is a concern of mine. We have the foothills above the city here in Centerville. We've got the bowl area and people continue to go up into those areas and light fires, uh, which is a very dangerous situation. The grass up there is tall, it's, it's very brown, it's very um, dry and ready to, ready to ignite. So the, the danger of people going up and lighting fires on the mountainside is real, and we are trying to keep a very close eye on that. Um, anytime we see a fire up there, we do call the fire department and have them come up and, and put it out. Uh, we are going to be a lot more aggressive in our enforcement. Um, generally speaking, we've been giving out warnings, but that's not going to be the case going forward uh, due to the kind of the dire situation we're in right now. As an emergency manager, uh, we've been pushing the idea of defensible space around your home. So um, people that live in areas where there might be dry grass around them or prone to a wildfire or fire uh, coming through a field or something towards their home. We'd like to see them have some defensible space and get rid of those ladder fuels uh, that are around their, their homes. So some good yard keeping uh, as far as trimming bushes and so forth like that can be, can be very helpful. Uh, as mentioned, we do have that restricted area that the council has approved and it's, uh, you can look at the map online at our website, the city's website. We've also posted that on our Facebook page, the Centerville Police Department's Facebook page. Um, we are going to be very firm on the enforcement of violations. So anyone who is lighting fireworks in that restricted area, uh, you can expect a citation. It is a class B misdemeanor. And uh, we, we hate to be, you know, the, the hard guy or the mean guy on that, but um, this is something that is critical. We, we feel like we need to take a, a firm action on that. The, uh, the other concern that I have, uh, and, and again, I'm putting on my emergency manager's hat. So FEMA is requesting that in our planning for various disasters that we include planning for climate change. And uh, I think we can kind of see that things are getting a little warmer um, and that that has been a trend. Um, you look at the waters of Lake Powell, Lake Mead, uh, Pine View, different reservoirs around that generate power. Um, I'm concerned about uh, our sources of power and a power grid um, during these real hot conditions. People are using their air conditioners extensively. Um, there's been talk of, of power blackouts. You know, St. George talked about the possibility of that. Rocky Mountain Power has, has uh, kind of given some warnings out in that regard. And whenever we have a power outage, that is a concern of mine as an emergency manager because we have people that might be on oxygen. They, they might have other medical implements in their home that require electricity. Heat is uh, heat can be a killer as well. So. Uh, 
I think people need to be concerned about that, conserve energy, and uh, maybe consider solar power or other things on, on their homes. So those are, those are my concerns. Um, we will be doing next patrols during the, the 4th of July celebration period as well as the 24th. And our officers have been instructed that they are not to give any warnings that every violation that they encounter and are able to take action on, that citations will be issued. And again, uh, no fires at all on the, on the east side here. Those are just not allowed. So I think that's it. Thanks, Chief. And I was one that uh, went to the Chief and said, uh, strictest, strictest, adherence to the rules this year and I uh, that's how that's how critical is this this year any last thoughts from anyone before I wrap up mayor I have one comment I, I don't want to steal your thunder maybe I know part or uh, Bruce may have brought this up from parks but we have the community park do you want to take this or you want me to take it to where we're going to try to keep that green Go ahead, quick, Mike. Okay, just that. real quick, you know, people may not understand. We have a water source down there that we either pump the water to the west or we can pump it up on the lawn. And talking with the mayor and Bruce and that, we want to keep a spot where our citizens can go where they can be on some good grass. Uh, so we're going to be trying to keep that going the best that we can using that source of water, realizing that it is not the irrigation water. It's you know, it's our subsurface water that we either pump to the west or we pump up onto the lawns. And so we're going to be doing our best to pump that up. We'll be doing our best not to use any Weber Basin water on that park. But uh, there again, we just want for our citizens that they have a place to go where they can be on some grass and, and enjoy the life. We, you know, we come out of a nice year of COVID and we run into, you know, drought uh, problems. So we're hoping to keep that going the best that we can. I don't know if the mayor wants to add anything else, but I did want to bring that up that, you know, we are being mindful of our citizens. We're trying to get everybody back to normal. I know that's a big thing for the mayor and our city managers to get things back to normal, but uh, that is something we're going to try to do our best. I know that Bruce is working on that, but I, I did want to bring that up because there is some positive things that come out of things, I guess. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that was perfect because I was just going to address, we just saw Bruce come in. Uh, we did have that source on our community park. That's the one along the frontage road with the four ball fields uh, where we could keep that uh, green. However, our other parks and, uh, not, not, will not be as green. And our city halls and our par uh, public works building, uh, we're uh, making sure that we've cut back to two days a week on that. Uh, Bruce, do you want to say anything quick before I wrap up? No, sorry, uh, but just, you yeah, know, we plan to, to uh, be as efficient as we can, uh, follow all the direction as, as far as the, the governor's given and Weber Basin is given. And other than the community park, like you've already talked about, where we have our own water source, uh, you'll probably see things uh, turning yellow and brown. <laughs> Thank you. All right, last words, anyone? If if not, I will wrap up this. I'm hoping that uh, all, you, all the residents of the center will, will find this useful. This is not meant to scare. Uh, it, if, if you don't want to go crazy out there, we want to stay, keep common sense, but these are all common sense, good things. Uh, and that uh, we can get through this if we work together, if we follow these guidelines, if we're considerate of our neighbors, uh, you, you've seen a, a, a good sample of, of uh, who we deal with. Uh, any of these departments are, are happy to answer any questions that you, that you may have. Um, I would just encourage you to uh, have, a, have a safe summer uh, that, and pray for rain and snow and uh, a, a big year this year. And that uh, as we work through this, we can come through this uh, together. And hopefully you've, you've found this very productive and and, and, and and it has answered any questions that y'all may have. So thank you all for your time. Thanks, Mayor.